Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of what I'm doing now, basically what I'm planning for the week. So it's Monday. I'm going to be up potting all my plants. These are plants that have been growing since January. You've seen some of them. We have tomatoes that are going to go into gallon pots actually right there. They're going to go into this cold frame. I'll show you in a second. Some cilantro, celery. These peppers are doing extremely well. I showed you these last Monday. They've even grown larger. So these were seeds started in a foil tray. And I'm probably going to keep these plants in those flats. Maybe the kale will go out into the garden. But they're just doing so well. Those are green bell peppers. And then everything over here, my eggplant, all my peppers, are going to go into these two and a half inch pots. They're going to be put into here. I'll be mulching out the bottom. Make sure, and this is really, I think, the most important tip. We know cold frames protect the plants from frost, but right now, well, last night it got down to like 30 degrees, so we had frost. If I had the tops down on here, it's getting up to 60, it's going to be 70 tomorrow, it's real possible that you overheat the inside, you kill off your plants that way. So you really want to set a timer to open these up in the morning, close them in the evening, they'll give the pepper plants or whatever you're putting in there protection. The tomato plants are going into those gallon containers and they're going into here. By digging into the earth, it really regulates the temperature even better than it than the cold frame just sitting on the top. So these pepper, um, these tomato plants in there will grow in the gallon containers, get larger, and then I'm gonna put them out into my garden. But everything grew beautifully. I'm very, very happy for that. Coming around here to the towers, my fruit plants are going to go into here, strawberries. Those are the alpine strawberries that I started in January. They're all acclimated, acclimated to the sun, the wind, the cold, so they're ready to go into the containers. Lots of herbs, rosemary, takes a long time to grow. I'm really happy with this group. Most of mine died off this year, and here in Maryland Zone 7, we're kind of on the bubble of whether or not they survive. So I'll have fresh rosemary going out, other herbs, these are my globe artichokes. They're ready to go into the ground. They got their several weeks of cold temperatures so that they flower and do their thing. This is foxglove, butterfly bush, all started inside. So most of the chores really for this week are to get my transplants out into the garden, which I'll be doing. I'm also making piles of weeds. I'll get to those later, they'll all die. I'm getting my beds ready for the warm weather crops. The peppers, the tomatoes, the eggplant all need protection for the next several weeks. Even though we have 10 days of no frost coming, it's always possible, you know, day 11, day 12 frost rolls in. So I am just getting the garden ready, cleaning it up, using the weed whacker, knocking down weeds, dropping mulch, you know, just getting really under control. All of this will be coming down. The bean seeds, I usually save them, but this year I'm taking off all the beans and they're full of beans. They're going to be spread all along the edge line of my woods out there. And I'm going to try and grow sort of wild beans, peppers, tomatoes. I've been throwing some of the rotted plants out there over last year and early this spring. So I just want to see what's going to grow on its own, just see what nature does. But I'm getting excited with the easing of the frost. Everything that we're just walking by now is really going to be the warm weather crops. Cool weather crops look pretty good. And I'll just be doing some light weeding, getting things ready, you know, putting my plan together. I was trying to teach my dog to walk in the garden paths and that was sort of a fail. But if you ever have a dog or an animal run through where you planted seeds, just leave the footprints. Let the plant survive, see what happens and then go and fill in the holes. Because some of the seeds will just get pressed down, they'll come out of the footprints, but if you fill them over, you're gonna just choke off whatever was going on. And just spin around here. So right up to this point, and this is a firewood I was using to keep some plastic on these different things. Right up to about here, cool weather crops, everything out that way, pretty much warm weather crops. So I'm getting set up. Let me show you another part of the garden real quick. The other thing I'm doing is I'm getting my perennial beds, my edible landscape beds ready, really for the spring. Everything's starting to come up. I decided to pay up for the bagged hardwood mulch 
because if you can see right over there, I had all that wood drop, that all has to be split. That's where my wood chip pile would go. So I don't have that space, but that's okay because ever since I redid the fruit garden with the brown mulch, I decided this year I like brown. So I'll be dropping this down and I don't have to put an inch down or two inches of this mulch. I'll remove the weeds and then I'll just lightly cover the brown. So it'll be more cosmetic than really functional. This is a pretty good space. So this is gonna be taken care of. Everything in here is going to be taken care of. My globe artichokes will probably go into there. These are butterfly bushes which have a really bad uh, stigma attached to them. These are sterile cultivars, which means they don't seed, they don't reproduce. So sometimes you hear really negative things about butterfly bushes for various reasons. Um, these plants and most of the new cultivars over the last really 10 years don't see, don't multiply. Just an FYI. They're beautiful. Bring in tons of pollinators to my garden. I actually like them. And then we're going to end up right over here where I didn't get to this last week, but this is all going to be planted out with my perennial flowers that I grew inside. I think I showed those off last week, but I have to take care of that space. And I also added some honeyberry, blueberries, and black currants. Well, will be will be adding them to my edible landscape and that's going to go they're going to go somewhere in here when i clean up everything well thanks for watching that's my plan for the week you know i'll probably get to a half of it no big deal everything looks good everything's coming up maybe do some divisions thanks for watching please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and just go slow and steady accomplish what you can don't overwhelm yourself with having to finish everything and having to be perfect